you know, my parents had a business or I see this opportunity, I'm going to start it and I'm going to work at it. And they don't have a plan. So they haven't actually tested whether their business model is viable. I mean, can they really make it happen? And the only way to do that is to actually look at all the components of your business. Okay? So for this next part, part there's a page in your book called The Business Canvas. It's on page 17? Okay, thanks. So you're going to want to have that in front of you. And you're actually going to create a business canvas right now, a very small, brief summary one. And we're going to do it together. Page 17? So not the PowerPoint, but the actual page. That's 15, right? It looks like this. It's like a worksheet. It goes this way. This is your business canvas. Yeah, this one. The one you have the page before. So I want you to have it in front of you. You don't have to look at the PowerPoint because I'm going to go through that with you. So just look at this, and then you can look at the PowerPoint later. And then take notes right there on that canvas. Because you'll be creating your own larger canvas, maybe, if you're inspired by this, when you get home. And then you can put it on the wall, or you can use a big poster board. Okay? So, let's go through it. What's a business canvas and how to do it, all right? So this little example is what I'm talking about. This is a business canvas I started working on for a business that I was looking into creating. And I got this far, and I realized it really wasn't viable for me. And that's kind of what you're going to do. You're going to work on your business canvas and not think it's not viable, but just start looking at the areas you might be weak in in order to make it viable. Okay? So you can see, you can do this later at home on a big poster board and use little post-it notes. But for today, we're just going to use our pencil and ideas that come up, okay? So a business canvas is a visual plan, like I said, of your business plan. It's sort of a graphic summary of all the components and assumptions in your business. So they call it a canvas because it's kind of like when you paint a painting, you have a blank canvas, and then you can create your business on it. But you can also paint over, right? You can move things around. You can change it up. And it can be used as a basis for a comprehensive and cohesive business plan. Most people, like if you want an investor to invest in your business, they aren't going to read a long business plan. I mean, before they decide if it's a viable business or not, they might get through two pages. And by then, you haven't even gotten to the heart of your business. So the canvas is something you can use to share with investors as well. Say, this is what I'm doing. This is how I know it's going to work. So it's worth doing. So why create it? It helps you identify all the components you need to look at to run a business. It's quick and easy to create and modify. It's portable. Like I said, you can share it. You can put it in your reports. You can bring it with you to presentations. It can help you sell your business idea to investors or even employees. And it helps you check whether it's feasible. And here's the thing, why many startups fail. So a study done by CB Insights examined 101 startups, brand new entrepreneurial businesses, that fail and compiled a list of the top reasons startups fail. So here are the seven most significant reasons. All right, number one is there's no market need or a poor product. Obviously, you have a poor quality product, but it's not going to succeed. The number two reason was that they lacked a business model. All right? They just went out and started selling and didn't have any strategy. They ran out of cash, which is, of course, a problem. They didn't have the right team. They had poor marketing. They didn't price their product right, either too much or too little, so they didn't make enough money. 
and they ignored their customers. They just thought, I'm going to go into business and do this and sell this product. But they didn't even ask their customers what they needed or wanted. Okay. So the four primary questions um, that we answer is, you know, are, who are you going to serve? We've already started talking about this. The seeds have been set, right? Planted. What service and product are you going to offer? How are you going to make it all happen? And why is a viable business a good investment for you, the bank, and society? All right, I'm having a hard time talking. Thank you. I'm getting tired, so it's good if it's quiet. All right, so those are the four parts, the four primary questions. So make it big. Like when you go home, you can you can put it on the wall with tape if you want, and then use little post-its to you know fill in these different categories. And then the important thing is before you even begin, remember your mission and vision. That should inspire everything you do with your business. Okay? So on the top of your form right now, we're gonna start. I want you to write your business name as you know it right now. Whatever, just make it up if you don't have one. On your form, nobody's writing. On your form, write your business name. So you guys are gonna start filling out your, yeah, right there. So I'm gonna show you so you know what I mean. Well, it's kind of hard to write it up on the top, but maybe next to it. Business, business name. And then if you have room, Later or today, you can write in your mission and vision. But if you don't have time, just read it right now. Read what your mission statement is to put that in your mind. Okay? Read your mission statement again. And your vision statement, if you've got one. Either you can write them on there or you can just read them. Okay? How are you going to change the world with this business? Okay, so we're going to start with who. Who are your customers? So go to the customer section on your canvas, which is the far right. And underneath it, I want you to write, who are your customers? Uh, you know, some of you talked about um, students you know, in villages, you know, far out, um, or under, maybe underprivileged people, you know, that don't have money, or um, women speaking fashion. Yeah. Okay. In which box should we write that? What's that? Our customers in which box? This customer. The far, the far right one. Customer segments. Yeah. So the customer segments are all the different customers. Like, should point to it here. I'll point to it. Right here. So who are your customers? You know, are they tourists? Are they, you know, we talked about this when we talked about your, your mission, remember? Like, who are you helping? Um, are they small business people? Are they children? Are they people, investors seeking to um, build businesses? Who are your customers? It should be pretty easy at this point. So I like this little example. This company is a startup helping homeless people making knit caps, okay? So they have three kinds of customers, the actual homeless people, the people that are buying the caps, 
and then the companies that might buy their caps. So some of you that are working like in the handicraft business, right? You're going to have more than one customer. You're going to have the customer that's shopping in your store, and you're going to have other stores that are buying your product, right? So customers. Does that all make sense? You guys got your customers? And then the next question is, what kind of support do your customers need or desire? Some of you are going to do things online, right? So you can have online support. Some of you are going to want personal, you know, one-on-one -on -one support for your customers. Like say the fashion, we're talking about fashion over there. They might want personal, or they might have both. They might have an online store and a personal shop. Um, and the question here is, do you know what your customer really wants? You got your customers figured out. Do you know what they want? If you don't, you should ask them. So that's my point here. Those of you that are starting a business or even have one, maybe it's time to talk to your customers and say, hey, you know, I have this product. You know, what do you want? Is this something you want? And if not, what would you want if it was something like this? Like you make t-shirts, you know, do, do you like the way I've done this? Is there something else you'd like? Um, don't assume. It's all way people assume. They're like, I like this thing. <laughs> I'm like, I would like it, you know, so I'm going to put it out there. Well, is it really what your customers want? So write, write down in the numbers correspond, oh, I guess they probably don't. Okay. Customer relationships. This box right here. Personalized service, online. Okay. So the third part is your channels of distribution. So how will you get your product or service to your customer? Now, do you have a physical shop? Do you have an internet store? Some of you talked about using social media. So write that down in the third box. Channels of distribution. Um, I, on this particular company, I like, again, they're doing it in a number of different ways, right? They have a shop where they sell their little hats online. They also sell their hats in a retail store, and they also do direct sales and deliver them. Okay, so now we've got all our customer stuff already. How's that going? You get it? We sort of already know who we are serving. That should be pretty easy, because if you don't know your customer, you really don't know your business, right? I mean, that's, that's we should, we should kind of know who we're, who we're selling to, and if we don't, we should ask some questions. But here's the heart of it. The what. The what is your value proposition? What products and services are you offering? And what is unique about your product or service? What benefits or value will your customer receive from getting what you offer? and what customer needs are you satisfying? So let's go back and look at where that is. That's the middle right here. And so we don't call that your product. It's more than your product. It's what makes it your product valuable. That's why it's called a value proposition. Okay, so in this example, they're making these hats to stay warm with style. That's what makes that product unique. And we've talked about your mission statements. Some of you shared something there. I'm making, I'm going to sell hats, but they keep you warm with style. And the other part of it is keeping homeless people warm for free. That's what makes it valuable, not just the hat. So I'm going to let you sit with this one, because the value 